Hey friends, Farmer Justin here again. This time I'm outside of the school gardens. I'm right by the pond, which is right behind me, as you can see. One of the great things about the school garden is that we have this little pond and it attracts all sorts of wildlife. Uh, a favorite among students are frogs. Um, so we're gonna take a look at some of the wildlife that I've seen around the gardens just in the last few weeks. And actually just the other day, right back over here, I saw a fox and a kit. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a video of it and not a very good quality picture. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Let's take a look first at some of the other things I've seen in the garden, and then we're gonna look at these frogs that are, and what's going on with some of the frogs. This is the common sow thistle and it's growing in our aquaponic grow bed. It's really interesting because it's covered with hundreds or thousands of little tiny bugs called aphids. And aphids like to suck the sap out of plants, which can be pretty harmful for the plant but they produce or excrete this sticky substance called honeydew. And who likes sticky sweet substances? Well, ants do. And ants essentially sometimes will farm or tend to the aphids. And this is another great example of a symbiotic relationship in the garden. Here's a little, what I'm calling a ribbon snake, type of garter snake that I've seen around quite a bit. And that's maybe about two feet long. But really, it just eats insects, worms, maybe a small frog or something. And it can scoot along the water and through all sorts of underbrush. Sometimes I just hear it. Here's an exciting returning visitor to the gardens. It's a snapping turtle. The snapping turtle's been coming here for a couple of years at least. Checks out the pond for a week or two and then heads out. They're really good at social distancing. Check it out as this car goes by. Yeah, I really didn't like that car getting close. I actually had a cone set up to protect it, um, and I was keeping an eye on it and making sure that it could make it across this road. And here you'll see it's going to get back up again. You'll get a good look at its claws and legs that are really strong and powerful, and that neck is really strong and very agile. In fact, it can swoop its neck around all the way to its hind feet, so we are careful around snapping turtles. Snapping turtles are opportunists. They're not really predators necessarily, but if something swims by within reach of their long, agile neck, they'll grab it and eat it. This one is likely making its trip to go either mate with, some, with another turtle, or maybe it's going to go lay some eggs somewhere, maybe it's already mated. So it'll dig a hole and lay about 20 to 50 eggs. This turtle probably recently came out of hibernating or at the bottom of a mucky river or pond or something not too long ago where it really was amazingly able to sit with very little oxygen throughout the winter. All right, bye Snappy. We'll see you next year. All right, early April in the garden. As things are thawing out and water's warming up, we start to get one of the garden favorites, which are the frogs. And here couple of green frogs basking in the warm sunlight. Probably just come out of hibernation. A frog life cycle consists of four different parts and all four of those parts happen in this little pond here at the Salma School Gardens when we get to see them. So first they start off as eggs, uh, fertilized eggs. And here's a gelatinous -y looking egg sac where they actually float in the water and they'll hatch out and eventually that you start to see almost like tiny fish inside of each one of those little bubbles that's inside of there, the gelatinous bubbles and it works its way out. The next stage in the frog life cycle is the tadpole stage. Tadpoles, tadpoles really look a lot like fish and, and like a fish it actually has gills to breathe underwater and their tail is very strong but Later on, as they get a little bit larger like these, they do start to develop hind legs and they can kind of spring around, but they still live underwater. The third stage is called the froglet stage. It really starts to look like a frog. It starts having those powerful rear legs that we're used to frogs having to be able to jump far on their front legs. They're, no long, they're looking less and less like a fish, although they still have their tail and are still able to get nutrients out of the tail. We'll often see them in the pond 
surfacing for water, or surfacing for air at this stage. They'll kind of pop up to the top of the water and take a few gulps of air and then drop back down. And the final fourth stage, of course, is the frog stage. And frogs can take another year or two to fully grow into an adult, at which point they hang out in the sun a lot, they eat a lot of bugs, and then they mate. You're about to see something I've only ever seen happen one time before. It's two frogs mating. There's two frogs in here, and the female frog is underneath that black mass. You can kind of see her legs there. And then she's laying eggs, while the male frog is fertilizing the eggs as they come out. Finally, I want to talk with you about different types of frogs. Mostly, we've seen green frogs in this video. We do have some bullfrogs and tree frogs. And to tell the difference, if we take a close look at the green frog, you can see it has a sort of long uh, ridge kind of behind its eye that runs kind of the length of its body. Well, as here we have on the left a green frog, and then on the right, it's a bullfrog, and you can see that right behind the eye, that line or that ridge sort of curves down behind its tympanum, which is basically its eardrum. And then finally, a tree frog, which are really pretty cool things. Thank you for taking time with me to learn today. I'll see you soon, and keep on growing.